Welcome back to the Combo Couch, everyone. Pasta Jardula here. And I'm Fiorella. 
Oh, there goes that microphone again. And guess who we have with us? Oh, I'm Glory. <laughs> <laughs> Glory Jones, OG in the house, is here. Fam, I think it might be the adapter piece, like in the back. The, ba the back, it's kind of like a little wiggly. It's yeah. not though. Like it's perfectly attached. I don't know. <laughs> I hate to say this out loud. But you're gonna have to pull it out and put it back in again. See if that works. Ridiculous. Ah, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> Glory, I was purposely Come on. avoiding. You were that. asking for it, bro. You were <laughs> asking for it. <laughs> I know. I was totally asking for it. Fam, how you doing? You gotta unmute yourself again. Now we can't hear you. Now we can't hear you at all. On the stream yard, you're unmuted. I'm not muting you. Uh, so, Glory, we'll riff really quick while uh, Firo <laughs> is getting set up over here. So, Glory Jones, uh, as you know, family, just talk, and when we hear you, we'll hear you. Uh, old school Glory Jones, uh, one of the first times she was in one of our films was at a Tulsi Gabbard event. Uh, fam, I am oh, yeah. fighting with Tulsi already today because she said she's going on some like minor league kind of conservative dude show. And I was just got I got a little upset. I mean, now to be honest with you, I am upset. I've been upset because the Jets lost Brees Hall for the year. Um, he oh, tore his no. ACL, he was our most explosive player. I made this, uh, this analogy here like he's hit a couple home runs. Meaning he's hit on big runs. He had a big 20. He had to get a 50 yarder against, uh, was it the Dolphins or Pittsburgh uh, or Green Bay? I can't remember. And then the other day, just yesterday, before he got hurt in the second quarter, he took a 60 something odd yarder, yarder to the house. The highest top end speed of any play this year in football. He reached 21 and a half miles per hour. I mean, I, I didn't want to watch it again, but I watched it again like five times last night, knowing that he might not be coming back he's also on a lot of my fantasy teams glory so now i've oh, lost gosh. him for the whole year on my fantasy teams and more importantly i've lost him the new york jets have lost their most explosive player out to a five and two start playing off the charts fam is back let me add you to here i i'll offer my condolences but i can't pretend to to care about the new york jets <laughs> fam can you hear me or no? Perfectly. And you're nice and yeah. loud. So, yeah, perfectly. Um, yeah. Lower that a little bit there. It might be better. But anyways, we were talking about my New York Jets fam. I'm really upset. Oh, so, my God. As long as we're riffing here, though, friendly, brilliant. Was that the no war with Iran? Your connection is like coming in and out. Can you say what you Mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My connection's been ass all week because it's been raining all week. I was finna say, Friendly Brilliant said that they meet when you took giant Tulsi signs to an anti-war rally. I think I know which one you're talking about. It might have been the no war with Iran protest in LA. Is Who was at that protest? Because... A bunch of people. Is that the old one you're talking about we all went to? After Soleimani's no. death? Was that a newer one? You're talking about a newer one. There was... A Two, there was one at the beginning of the year in January. That was that was like the big, big one. And but then there was like a follow up day of action in like February twenty something, I think, or some day. That. And then I was back out in LA for that because I went to the Miami one at the beginning of the year because that was in the middle of winter break. So I like was home, mm -hmm. and then um and then school started up again in January. So I went there to so I went to the LA one in February. Ah, nice. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, fam, we were also talking before you came in. I started a fight with some Tulsi fans and some Tulsi peeps. So just getting into it today. Just one of those days, fam. I'm feeling scrappy. How you doing over there? How's the weather like in Moscow? Fam, I'm not here to talk about the weather. Okay. We're going to talk about Haiti, aren't we? We are going to talk about yeah. Haiti. So we might as well just jump right into it, I guess. Sorry. Um, let me, <laughs> I'm <laughs> exhausted. That's how I am. I know, I know, I know you're working, you're took us off. So, um, glory shared this. I figured this is a good way to start the segment today. Glory shared this 
a while ago, and I just reshared it. Um, we haven't gotten a chance yet to take our, our act to the Caribbean yet, fam. I know it's on the schedule for us to uh, eventually get to the Caribbean. Obviously, Cuba is in sight for next year. Uh, mm -hmm. But the connection between South and Central America and also to the Caribbean. Uh, and we've talked about this back in the days, the way, you know, uh, what's going on as far as regime change, as far as Western intervention. So let's take a look at this that clip that Glory has. and We'll start the show off with this. I'm going to mute us on up, guys. Convo Couch, thank you for joining us today. Thank you to all our moderators out there. Thank you, Jilly Love. Uh, guys, you know the drill. Share, like. Let's get that uh, that uh, link to the Rockfin back into the Convo Couch. We're also on Rumble. Let's share that on out, guys. Uh, here's a clip from Glory she's put up for a while ago. Let's take a look. Butch Ashton built up a multi-million dollar string of businesses under the Duvaliers. Large American firms that want to invest hire him for his government connections and his knowledge of how Haiti works. Our famous Tontamakuts, quote unquote, were trained by our US, U.S. Marine Corps, whether we realize it or not, and armed by our United States government as well. Uh, we propped up a baby doc. We kept him in power. When you say that the Marines trained the Tontamakut, what do you mean? Well, I'm, I, I mean what I said. I'm saying that uh, we, and during, in 1961, 62, we had a U.S. naval mission here that was supposedly training the Army. And uh, at the same time we were training the Army, we were knowledge, knowingly training the militia, which part of that militia was the Tontamakut, but the militia was the volunteers of Sécurité Nationale. And our weapons, our M1s, our rejected weapons, were given to the militia and our new weapons were given to the army and we knew this and we had uh, actual uh, marines training these civilians and anybody that doesn't know this is the fooling themselves and not myself because i was here during that whole period okay so much could be said right over there in this particular clip fam uh they talked about the duvaliers they talked of also about keeping baby doc in power and if and I, I'd like to know if you can, if you have any um, any explanations about Baby Doc, who he was, because I, you know, what I learned, what type of leader he was, and why he was elevated for the West, and why he was kept in power, uh, glory. It's almost like that saying that if you don't learn history, you're doomed to repeat it. And everything is we're looking at right now, from Marines landing in Haiti. Um, to the West getting on the table, deciding on what they're going to do again, what the West is going to do with Haiti. Uh, it just seems like more of the same of the past. Uh, and and yet, you know, we don't see a lot of people with a lot of Haitian flags in their bio. Give us a, a little uh, explanation to what's going on. Yeah, right. So I guess I'll start with just adding context to that clip. So uh, that was Butch Ashton. Um, a uh, billionaire who was able to set up multiple stakes in Haiti, particularly because, like the video mentioned at the beginning, his connections with the government of Haiti during the Duvalier dictatorships. Um, it really began with, in the late 50s with Francois Duvalier, aka Padoc, who was kind of who's kind of like the lesser known of the two Duvaliers, but he's all but he's kind of the one that started it and started that whole period of, like brutality um prior and francois duval it was a character that was actually brought into power by the united states because prior to him um the haitian the haitian people had a uh, appointed a leader by the name of daniel fignolet um and this individual was um a pop populist teacher and he had and he and he was on the record and he was on the record in um like even you know new york times and time magazine back or no not time magazine sorry life magazine back is saying that he wants to bring in a new deal for haitians so he was more or less trying to bring basic welfare programs for Haitians. And as a result of that his leadership only lasted a grand total of 19 days um, so he was ousted by the military and in his place, uh, sham elections were held and in came Papa Doc Francois Duvalier, who was elected, le elected leader. Um, and, and he, he reigned during the, uh, 
1950s onto the late 60s. And then after that, his son, baby doc Jean-Claude Duvalier, stepped in and continued the same policies. Um, what the overarching... <laughs> what the what the overarching policies of the Duvaliers was, was basically making sure to open up the island of Haiti to American businessmen. Several mafia style <laughs> oligarchical crime families, which which were able to take control of Haiti's ports and still have control of Haiti today. That's actually how they're able to traffic in many weapons into, um, into the island, even though they have domestic manufacturing of weapons or guns or any of that so um so basically uh he, they allowed oligarchical crime families to set up stakes in Haiti's ports and they also basically um kind of drove Haitians into uh what into like now famous shanty towns like Cita Soleil or Bel Air to become workers for ridiculously low wages for these large multinational corporations to be able to produce consumer products for the United States. And um, and this was something, of course, that was hated by the Haitian people and protested by the Haitian people frequently. So to quell that opposition, what you need is not only um, aid from the United States government because humanitarian assistance was given to the Duvaliers as a way, as a means to legitimize them by the United States. The United States was one of the first government to uh, recognize the Duvalier dictatorship when he first came to power in the late 50s. Uh, and that video, that, that video that you played a couple minutes so that's where the Tantan Makuts came in. Uh, the, and the Tantan Makuts was basically this separate paramilitary unit from the police that acted as a security squad, as a security squad whose whole purpose essentially was to quell any opposition to the Duvalier dictator. Um, under Francois Duvalier, it was the Tantan Makuts. And then under Jean Claude Duvalier, eventually the Leopard. Would, uh, would fall, which was the same thing. But like the video outlines, they were trained, armed, and funded by the U.S. military um, as a means to be able to stop any popular uprisings from taking place. Uh, unfortunately, or well, not unfortunately to them, but fortunately for us, uh, didn't succeed because um, the Haitian people were able to overthrow not not Papa Doc, but they were able to get rid of Baby Doc and overthrow him and usher in and begin to usher in some sort of like sovereignty for themselves, some sort, you know, and really begin a move towards proactive establishment of like programs, welfare programs, and infrastructure plans for Haiti. And that was something said by uh, Jean Bertrand Arrête. Uh, and then that's when um, uh, Aristide got, uh, got couped in 1991 and then again in 2004 because he, you know, again, committed the same crime as Daniel Fijnolet did in the late 1950s of wanting basic welfare programs and decency for Haitians. So um, that's that. And I got my... I'm trying to like streamline a quick timeline here because there's a lot to go over, but um, so, I, yeah. your your internet is glory is really really bad. It's my yeah cutting in and out. Um, okay, so what do you want her to do? Should she come back? Your microphone is acting up. This is just hey <laughs> hey um I don't know what we should do. Here, let me try this. Is it better now? Well, yeah. I can't tell because you haven't talked, but fam, your your the microphone is really staticky. Is it better now? Yeah, it seems better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Fam's messing with her microphone. Fam, you got to unmute yourself now right. again. So we'll see if that works. So where did I uh, where did I cut out then, or do you want me to? No, you were. You were. I mean, 
Is this you're okay. okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're, my, it doesn't seem like it's on now. So. Okay. Um, yeah, we need to get this fixed because this can't be happening every single time. I don't know what to do. Because uh, I'm not, it's all connected. Let's see here. There you go. You're back on. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what you were saying is um, just a, a brief history, but I kind of wanted to go into what's going on right now. So unless Absolutely. you have other, other questions, Pasta. No, no. Good. Okay. So my, my whole thing is there, is there any sort of actual counter movement? Because we have seen people uh, say that obviously there's some, you know, faux revolutionary movements. There's also uh, the attempts of of certain groups to ask for U.S. intervention, which we know that's not like the the vast majority of Haitians on that. But there's also um, the G9 leader Jimmy Barbecue uh, Charizer. How do you feel about him? There has seemed to have been different opinions as to where these groups stand, and people got mad to a degree that um that hey there were russian and and, and pro-china uh flags and demands in haiti when um haitians should be not looking to faraway countries they should be looking to perhaps their 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 selves so there's a lot going on there and i just wanted to get your take on that right so um i will turn on my just a bit to show you uh who uh who uh, Jimmy Terizier, a.k.a. Barbecue, is, and uh, might give a beginning inclination as to uh, my sentiments towards this individual. That's Jimmy Terizier. Um, and, the and the woman next to him is Helen Lalim, who is at the BNU office in Haiti. So um, Jimmy Terizier is... Essentially, to me, what I would like to call a Toto Constant or Guy Leap 2.0, um, in that he is sort of, well, not sort of, he's more or less a low level, um, a low level paramilitary troops for the oligarchs that intend to arm paramilitary forces in Haiti as a means to quell any sort of uh, popular resistance to any puppet leaders. Um, if you listen to uh, Haitians, and particularly Bel Air and Cite Soleil, especially, uh, one of they've held frequent protests against the G9. The G9 Gang Federation was actually, in a sense, legitimized by the BNU office in 2020. In September of 2020, uh, Helen Lalim auth authored a report which noted that the G9 Gang Federation was formed as a means to increase cohesion. And then she damn near endorsed the gang because she said that there was a drop off in crime in the area when in reality there wasn't. Um, if you look at the timeline of the UN occupation in Haiti, it ended in 2019. And prior to that, Jimmy Cherizier was a cop and not just any cop, uh, most Haitian police have uh, many ties to the US military, uh, as that video points it out, uh, that video that I shared earlier pointed out. And um, so not only was he a cop that had, that was trained by the US State Department, but after serving as a, as a cop, he, right after the UN occupation leaves, he goes and forms the G9 Gang Federation and receives weapons from, we don't know where. We don't know who pays for the weapons. And that's a question that has yet to be answered as it has yet to be answered with any other gang, with any other paramilitary gangs in Haiti, like the 400 Mavozo or any of these smaller gangs in Haiti. Um, most of them receive arms from oligarchs who traffic them in through their privately owned ports and give them arms to go and terrorize Haitians to not only suppress popular uprisings, but also to go and um, to go and essentially drive Asian farmers off of their land to take control of their food, to attack food sovereignty, and also to again provide low wage workers to the shanty towns of the city. So um, while I understand that Cherizier has a habit of uh, of you know comparing himself to Dessalines and uh, advocating for 
for kind of or advocating on behalf of the poor people in Haiti and, you know, saying all the pretty revolutionary rhetoric. Uh, I understand he said that, but that being said, uh, so did Francois Duvalier, and he still has supporters to this day in Haiti because of it. Um, Francois Duvalier also had a habit of advocating for poor Black Haitians and, you know, going on the occasional anti-American rant, but uh, that what didn't make him Haitians? any less of a dictator. What about, what about the UN the sanctions? Uh, the, the, the attempt to, of, of, to have UN sanctions on um uh barbecue like what what is if if he is like just another puppet why are they trying to sanction him why are they going well after they're him? not cutting him off they're not really cutting him off i mean and what the un has done is i think they're doing this on purpose but they haven't allowed the public to read a copy of the actual sanctions resolution but to mm -hmm. my knowledge they haven't properly cut him off. They just instituted a travel ban and visa ban on him. They have kind of froze his location. But it's not like he was going to go on a vacation anytime soon. And not to mention, they targeted him, but not any of the other, but not Iska or other gang leaders throughout Haiti, throughout Haiti or any other uh, Haitian gang members. They didn't actually mean to target any of the suppliers of him. If they really cared about targeted his flyers but they and that's something that china's credit they called for in the u.n security council meeting not not, not friday but this past wednesday we were talking about actually supporting the resolution against sanctions on um, well we we didn't hear any of that we didn't hear any of that oh, Hold on, stop stop we, yeah stop with the china thing start over again to china's credit you said, what did they do? I, because you missed it all. Yeah, sorry. I was saying, uh, to China's credit, they actually advocated for for rigorous sanctions, not just on the gang leaders, but on their supply. Of effectively cut them off rather than just instituting travel ban or a visa pause on these leaders. Because just doing that isn't going to do anything. It's just a giant smokescreen to help aid in the narrative that gang violence, violence that, ignoring the fact that the worst perpetrators of violence in are the U.S., the U.N., and the oligarchs, military squads in Haiti. I missed the end of that. Um, the... You just keep cut, cutting in. Yeah, and out. I mean, right when you're getting to the, all the important parts, you can't hear anything. You become, you start talking like Megatron. Uh, sound oh, like sound. It. For the Transformers. Yeah, the the internet is really wonky. It's 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 bad. But um, from what I understand is what you're saying is that they haven't necessarily called to cut off the actual arming of these different gangs. China has kind of stepped up to the plate and said, also let's sanction the suppliers to make sure that we really kind of bleed or dry them out as far as like you know the, the uprising of gangs in which they're claiming is the is the situation so what 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 do you expect to happen in the next few weeks and what could what could possibly change the this whole situation from going down the normal this is what's going to happen to haiti puppet government path that it's been on for quite some time <sighs> well Unfortunately, I think um, right now all indicators point to um, the fact that that a, a military force will be deployed in Haiti, um, because even if it's not through the UN, um, the Bahamas have already expressed support for um, sending military aid to Haiti. U.S. and Canada have already sent military equipment to Haiti. And um, Mexico is probably going to help as well. And unfortunately, uh, it, if uh, Lula wins in Brazil, which is looking lightly, unfortunately, uh, Brazil will probably send troops as well, given their history of policy towards um, the island of Haiti. So unfortunately, I think even if, even if a UN resolution for intervention in Haiti gets blocked somehow, um, I think that'll still be circumvented by the United States. Um, I think it sucks because it's like there is an effective roadmap for Haiti, 
that can happen. Um, the Find Me Lawless movement, which is kind of like the which is the party of uh, Jean Bertrand Aristide, and kind of like a political contingent to the current uprising. They have several plans for development in Haiti, but the problem is uh, to do all of that, you need the U.S. out, and unfortunately. It, it's just going to take everything we can to get protests going, not just in Haiti, because they've already been protesting relentlessly. Um, it's going to take everything we can here in the States and in Canada and in the UK and, and surrounding the UN to make sure that they don't intervene in Haiti, to tell them, you know, hands off Haiti, get the hell out of there. Yeah. And I was just going to say, if Bolsonaro wins, it's still the same shit because Bolsonaro Absolutely. is not from Haiti um, by any circumstances. Yeah, Bolsonaro is a little <laughs> bitch, too. Because <laughs> uh, we there's a lot of pro-Bolsonaro people uh, for some reason. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know if you have any other questions, Pasta. I just... No. Um, um, yeah, too much cutting in and out, so it's it's tough to have the, the interview this way because it's just too much, and your microphone's acting up again. So, uh, Glory, thank you so much for joining us. Tell everybody where they can follow you, um, and I will repeat it if it doesn't come in properly. Uh, in fact, I can show your Twitter if that's cool. Okay, yeah, I'm Glory Jones. Y'all can find me on the ground and around. Uh, look up Glory Jones. I come up with a hashtag free Assange next to it. Apologies for all the tech difficulties. Um, what else can you expect when we're talking about Haiti? Um, yeah. All right. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm not quite literally. Your... Yeah. There's, guys, there's her Twitter. Go ahead. Go to Glory Jones. Old school. Glory Jones and Haas. Uh, keeping an eye on Haiti. You know, it's funny, though. You, you're the, the one place it could spark, right? If things can get going. Uh, if if there's anywhere, it's South Florida. And mm -hmm. I just think that a lot of people from Haiti, I haven't really got a chance to talk to them. But when I come back, I will. If there's some fear for them speaking up that they, you know what I'm saying, might know somebody or are close to somebody that could get deported. So therefore, that's why there's a lot of silence. Because I'd like to see a lot of Haitian people in South Florida really speak up, you know, present some type of solution, whatnot. I mean, um, the, the, the government that's there is the, is, is the puppet government that was left over from last time the mm -hmm. Haitian president was, was, was murdered for whatever reason. And there's a lot of that can be a whole show going into that. But I mean, this wasn't like an elected government. So when this government's asking for help, <laughs> it has no right to. Yeah. It, when, it when Henri it. goes up and asks for help, he's only following orders. And I mean, like, there, like there, there's so, you know, there really is so much to go into, not just regarding the recent news, but also going into uh, the PHTK and its role in the assassination of Jovenel Moise. But um, yeah, right. Like you said, Henri is a complete and total puppet. So. Yeah. So when he's asking for help, it doesn't make a difference anyways. It's just the United States calling the shots once again in the West. Uh, Glory Jones. You guys know where to find her. Free Assange. Thank you, Glory Jones, for coming on. Keep us posted on Haiti, okay? All right. I will. All right. Thanks, y'all. Glory Jones, y'all. Problems in uh, Florida with the weather. When it gets like that, it's almost impossible to have a good connection. It would be like that forever. So, fam, you there? Uh, you're muted. Can you hear me? I can. Very low, though. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm, a little better? bit better. Okay. That's as good as it gets. I don't want to touch it. Yeah. Now it's really loud. So, but you're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Fam, I do have a video from uh, uh, from AJ Newsbroke. Do you want to skip it or do you want to see it? Yeah. One? Yeah. They're terrible. Yeah. Okay. So we'll skip it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I do have one from Dan Kovalec. Yeah. Yeah, because Dan Kovalik brought up a really good point, and I was grabbing. We've we've had the other two Dans. We might as well get the third Dan on. In other words, we've had <laughs> Dan, Danny Shaw. We've had Danny Cohen. We need Dan Kovalik. We need the I, my three Dans is what we need, fam, on this show. That sounds like a movie. I know, right? <laughs> a story about Haiti. My three Dans. No. No. Right. <laughs> oh, there he is. There, there he is. The good-looking guy there. Let's get it going, guys. This is a good question. Why don't we see the hands-off uh, Haiti flags? Hmm. 
uh, the question that's been on my mind for the last week or so, and that is, why aren't there hashtags saying stand with Haiti? And I ask this as Joe Biden is now, now poised to invade Haiti. That w- This would be one in many U.S. invasions of that country, all of which have been disastrous. The most famous one being by Woodrow Wilson in 1915 when he sent in U.S. Marines who looted uh, Haitians' treasury, took all their money and brought them back to banks in, the, in New York. And uh, for good measure, the U.S. reinstated forced labor in Haiti that had been outlawed since the early 1800s. And uh, now we see the U.S. poised to intervene again. Of course, Biden is claiming that the prime minister of Haiti is inviting the U.S. However, the prime minister was installed after the president of Haiti was murdered by Colombian, we know Colombian paramilitaries who were meeting in Miami shortly before the assassination. Uh, I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that the U.S. uh, was somehow behind that assassination, having these very close links to Colombia and the Colombian death squads. By the way, this happened, of course, before uh, the election of Gustavo Petro, who's who's a progressive president in Colombia. Uh, and so now the U.S., uh, having helped install this puppet, is saying that it needs to go into Haiti to restore order. But why is there disorder? Because people hate this prime minister who's unelected, who they know represents the U.S. and not their interests, and they're protesting against this planned intervention. And yet uh, the U.S. is going to go in and put down these protests. And so where are all these people who are concerned about the special operations in Ukraine? Why aren't they opposing the U.S.'s intended invasion of Haiti? Fam, why aren't they having a Haitian flag? I stand... With Haiti, hands off Haiti. Nobody's out there. Nobody's saying anything. It's just silent, fam. What's going on? What's the dealio? Because they haven't been told to. Because they haven't been told to by the propaganda machine to put a Haitian flag in, in, in their bios. It's as simple as that. The United States uh, uh, and the United States citizens are the most propagandized people in the entire world. And if they don't get told, by mainstream media and it's not just mainstream media anymore it's instagram snapchat like every social media app you can think of that they need to care about poor ukrainians then they're not going to care about poor ukrainians they didn't care for the last almost nine years when ukrainians who were ethnic russians were getting killed nobody cared nobody did anything and so um that's why and it's as simple as that. And Haiti, of course, is a poor country, uh, but it's not really a poor country. It's a poor country because it's been exploited by the West. It, it just should be a rich country. And it is the prime example. This is why this is like the ninth time the U.S. is intervening in Haiti in such a tiny half of an island because they are a prime example of what a, a revolutionary movement was the uh the slave rebellion that was successful and that is something that is a part of it and right now of course you have the united states trying to wage war with russia via ukraine and it's you're only allowed to care about ukrainians as because they serve the purpose of vilifying russia and it's always about making the foe the the problem rather than holding any sort of accountability so that's that's really wh- why I think pasta. Um, fam, that is the best reason I've heard so far because they haven't been told to yet. It's so, and you know, I knew you were going to give that kind of answer after seeing that you woke up and chose violence today. You know, you had the picture of the NATO with the sheep in the boat behind it. I'm like, all right, fee <laughs> fee wrap the fees wrapping the wire around the bat, ready to go to work. That's what the Steve was talking about this morning. So it's like. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> that's the that's the right answer. They haven't been told to yet, fam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they haven't. And right now, I think, like I said the other day, in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna see uh, things happen. Right? We have uh, Zelensky right now trying to basically they're trying to arm a a an attack to blame on Russia. Like they've been doing this whole time. 
they've been doing this this whole time with the uh, bombing, the shelling of hospitals, schools, that whole situation, saying Russia did it with the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, saying Russia did it. So why wouldn't they try to do this on a bigger scale? And of course, this this is what we're going to talk about now is, you know, how this sort of process came together with the, you call them woke left. I prefer the term synthetic left. Um, yes, they're woke, but woke used to be a good thing. And it's been co-opted now to be these morons who just like literally promote war while focusing on just stu stu stupid superficial things, yeah. but promoting death squads and, and Nazis. So yeah, well, some quick, some quick super rays. We have one from Trey Wright, first one on the building. Thank you, Trey Wright. It's always appreciated in the house. Aram on rocking. And then Aram also put this one up here, which I can share because I copied it in the link. Say her name, Pasta. Say her name. Ao Cheech. She's a victim. Listen, listen. Uh, apologies, Pasta. You're a Listen, listen. Essay. Listen, listen. So that's, that's what he was doing. Listen, listen. Your microphone is kind of close. It's a little crackly, but it's okay. So we'll figure it out. Uh, guys, I will get to the next section right here. This is what was on yeah. the uh, on the link today. You can see it. The neocons and the woke left are joining hands and leading us to World War Three. It says woke war three. <laughs> woke war three. Oh, I'm sorry. Good eye, fam. I'm sorry. What's that? What's going on? What's happening? Sound the alarm. Listen. <laughs> so Elon Musk got in hot water on Twitter again for proposing peace. On Monday, Musk proposed a peace deal to end the war in Ukraine, for which he denounced as a pro-Putin puppet by the Twitter mob that was formed to police the discourse on all things related to Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, Russia peace, redo elections of the annex regions under UN supervision. Russia leaves uh, if that is the will of the people. Well, right off the bat, fam, he yeah. didn't I, do it anymore. Can but. I just no, no, guys, sorry, you don't have to, you don't have to promote Elon Musk to literally understand that NATO and the West are wrong on this issue. Elon Musk has been going back and forth. Oh, we're not going to supply. Ukraine, and then he's like, "Yes, we are. This is all fucking for show. If you don't get that, you're just on hopium. You want some billionaire to come and save you because that's what you've been propagandized to believe. I don't care if Elon Musk buys Twitter's or if he doesn't, because at the end of the day, this the same people will be in charge. Nothing's gonna get better. And if he proves me wrong and takes off Russia state affiliated media and starts and treating everybody equally, I'll say, oh my God, I was wrong. Elon Musk did a good thing, but I don't think that's gonna happen." And I, I, I wish, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I think way too many people give this guy way too much credit. This guy is literally linked to like, um, his, his family is so powerful. They're technocrats. He has been involved in this sort of, you know, transhumanist like approach for a long time. This is who he is. He has been making money off the defense industry. He, he, he gets, pro um, pretty much propped up and, and financed by the, the defense industry. So for people to come here and pretend that he's going to somehow bring peace, yes, is what he's saying somewhat in opposition to the West now. Yes, it is. But it goes back and forth every day. And him saying that we need to redo elections of annexed regions under UN supervision, they already did the elections. You're basically saying that the UN and the West have more jurisdiction over what these countries and these people, the people of these countries should do and what they've decided already than they do. Yeah. And again, that's still, you're justifying American intervention, American exceptionalism and, uh, and everything else. And Crimea already voted to be a part of Russia a long time ago. And a lot of yeah. people got that wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, your, mic, yeah. your mic is acting up again static wise try to lower it a little bit see if that works somebody was mentioning in the chat that you're using the wrong type of cord and maybe we might have to get another cord for that to try it again but uh it's a little static all right you go ahead okay yeah it's static um yeah, I mean, he says we do elections at the annex regions under UN supervision. 
uh, Russia leaves if that's the will of the people. I mean, I like really to tell you the truth, like you know, there's people who say that they're they're trying plays in the sand instead of going to a playbook and like professional sports because that's how unorganized they are. That's what this seems like equivalent to me. Like, oh my god, he's just making shit up as it goes along. Crimea, formerly part of Russia, as it has been since 1783. Well, why aren't you recalling for those elections to be done under UN supervision? Those elections just happened couple years ago four years ago right five years ago uh, it's just like ah let me just pull this out of my ass here water supply to Crimea assured of course <laughs> ukraine remains neutral this is my favorite one dude they haven't been able to remain neutral towards uh ethnic speaking russians they've always they wanted them to remove their language they've done try to do so much to these people now all of a sudden out of the blue you think you're just going to just remain neutral people voted he got 60 percent no 40 percent yes 4159. Uh, the president himself, uh, of Ukraine himself, who's a puppet, Voldemort Green Screen Zelensky, accused Musk of supporting Russia, even though Musk company SpaceX donated Starlink to Ukraine's war effort at an out of pocket cost of $80 million. Eh, you know, I'll do it for $80 million out of pocket because you guys are friends of mine. I would normally charge you. 160 million, but I'll let you go for half the price. Full disclosure, Musk is a friend and I am an investor in SpaceX. Ukrainian ambassador to Germany, Andrei Melenik, was less subtle, telling Elon to F off while David Frum, David Frum tweeted without evidence that Russian sources had used Elon to float a trial balloon on a peace proposal because they're afraid of losing Crimea. Listen to this shit. That's David Frum, ladies and gentlemen. David Frum, the one who pushed for Iraq intervention, for us to go into Iraq, and then acted like it was one of the greatest things that ever happened when millions of people died, right? The anti-Trump neocon David Frum. Scores of blue checks on Twitter followed their lead, ordering Musk to stay in his lane. Stay in your lane. How dare you? What do you mean? It's How can it not be his lane? He donated their satellites so they could use fly their drones and do whatever they got to do. What matters in the story is not that Musk was told off, but rather that the Twitter hive mind is using the same intolerant cancellation tactics that they use to shut down debate on domestic political issues in order to shape U.S. policy towards Ukraine. That was big. They are doing so by demonizing dissent, defaming opponents, and closing off as ideology unacceptable any path to peace or even de-escalation. Uh, the online mob has decided that any support for a negotiated settlement, even proposals that Zelensky himself appeared to have supported in the beginning of the war, is tantamount of taking to Russia's side, denouncing voices of compromise and restraint as Putin apologist. You want peace? You love Putin. This removes them from acceptable discourse and shrinks the Overton window to those advocating the total defeat of Russia at the end to Putin's regime, even if it risks World War III, fam. We've seen this before. Woke mobs on Twitter routinely demonize and defame their political opponents. Uh, the motives of anyone who question their goals or tactics. I'm sorry? Impugn the motives. Impugn the motives of anyone who questions their goals or tactics and squelch dissent, even in their own ranks, by declaring the debate on certain topics over. <laughs> What makes the I stand with Ukraine version of the Twitter mob unique is that it brings together two forces that used to be sworn enemies of one another, fam. The woke left and the neoconservative right. hoo It turns out <laughs> they share many of the same loathsome ideological and personality traits and have similar slash and burn approach to political engagement. It's the new political marriage. And you know what about it, both of them? He loves the cock. Sorry. Fam, are you there? Fam, can you? It's totally unnecessary to do that. Sorry. Um, so the, it's nothing new. I mean, they're the neoliberals, essentially. They're the new neoliberals. They just slapped a label of progressive uh, on it. They put AOC out in the forefront. It's the same thing. The neoliberals and neocons will always shake hands when it comes to war. That's that's been a thing for a long time. And this is just a more of um, reemergence of that. Right. But again, I say this all the time when a Republican is in control, you're going to see this same sort of rhetoric with China 
and you're going to see it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, you're going to see it because this isn't about, um, you know, the Republican party coming in and saving us. This is the reality is right now, this moment, perhaps the, the Democrats and the neocons and the, you know, the AOCs, they're more right now pushing this war because they, this is, this is that agenda that the administration is pushing that the state department more so the state department is pushing because we know Joe Biden is in charge, but when it comes to the next administration that is selected because we don't have fair elections. So under any sort of uh, premise, don't think that people are just going to be mad and elect whoever they want because we don't have fair elections in the United States. So if the right gets in there, it's by design and there is going to be another foreign policy focus on that as well. So mm -hmm. don't think for a second that everything will be solved because we we're going to have like, you know, a, um, a, uh, a, a government that's a Republican government. The people though differ, the people on the ground, the people that are not in political power do have a difference. There is a difference between a Trump supporter and a, you know, old school, uh, McCain, uh, type of supporter, a neocon. There's a difference between that. There's a difference between that and a libertarian. And there's a difference between that and, you know, us. And then there's a difference between us and AOC who calls herself, you know, a leftist who's supposed to be this democratic socialist. So there are all these little factions. And the problem is in the United States, we've only had a two party system. So we don't know what to do with those factions. And they're not a monolith. The The thing that that is very, very outlined is what the powers that be are doing. So, um, yeah, and I think it's important to note that, yes, even though Elon Musk is just theatrical and he's saying all this stuff, the vitriol that has been launched at somebody basing, basically saying milk toast intervention is shit just shows you how bad it is and how, like, even saying something like, oh, yes, we need to, like, monitor these elections and redo them is, is something looked at as, oh, my God, how dare he say that? So it, it's that bad. It's that well, bad. The American exceptionalism is that bad. I, I don't know why he wouldn't call for uh, re-elections then on, on Crimea, which happened, like I said, four years ago. Like, what's OK with those elections? And like you said, like, why? You don't know anything about elections if you think the U.N. is, is known for throwing good elections. The U.N. is known just like the USAID, just like the OAS, for just sticking up for Western uh, intervention. That's what they want. They're all part of the same you know, uh, gang. So no, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all the Russians did was provide security and let the people of the Donbass throw their election. But I do have to disagree a little bit, fam. The fact is that I think the voters themselves, uh, this is why I became a Democrat at one point is what, what was happening in Iraq. And I think there were a lot of Democrats there. They didn't pay close attention to what was going on in the halls of Congress. They didn't pay close attention to what Joe Biden was doing on the floor of the Senate or how some of the people got together and pushed the Democrats got along went hand in hand with a lot of the Republicans on that. So I think a lot of the voters, when they wanted to vote out George Bush and they wanted to choose Obama, it was all about choosing anti-war. But then they were silenced during Obama. You know what I'm saying? They were afraid to speak out for Obama. And, and, and then again, a lot of people in the States, a lot of voters, even though their vote doesn't count anyways, don't pay attention to foreign policy. So if, to me, this is like a little bit like right now, it's like, They've already had the TDS affect them. They've already made their decision that they're mitigating damage. They've already made a decision that they're playing team sports. Now they're going to try to act like some of this stuff is justified, that it's necessary for us to go into Ukraine because Putin is that awful. So what are you disagreeing with? I'm confused. Because I think you said at one point that it's there. This is nothing new, that they've kind of always been that way. A lot of the neoliberals, neocons. Yeah. Well, I was just saying that the neoliberals, uh, yes, they've been along, but the, the Democratic voter has not always been a neoliberal. The Democratic voter at one point was anti-war, but now a, a Democratic voter essentially is pro-war. What's yeah. that? So. Yeah, I said that the people are different. The, 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 there's differences between you know Trump Republicans and then the other Republicans. There's There's differences, and you're right. I mean, I think... That there was a point where the liberal, when you were known as a liberal, you were known as a free speech advocate. You were known as 
somebody that fought for, you know, civil liberties. It, you were you were the ones protesting outside. That used to be like liberal. But what happened is neoliberalism took over and basically the the Democratic Party which had traditionally been supported by more unions and by people of working class w abandoned those people and they focused on the bourgeois, the intellectual, the uh, post, you know, the college educated, post of masters, PhD educated group, then the big tech sort of came in. And now you have the liberals are mainly representative of that and the working class, the white working class in the Midwest and in parts of the South that used to support the Democrats, that used to be good Democrats, they completely rebelled and left. And that's, I think that's why you saw so much support for Trump on the ground because they were screwed over by this move, this shift towards multinational corporations, towards globalization, which is why you see a lot of these people be very much, oh, we're anti-globalists, we're anti-TPP, or anti all of this and this is and that's why all those people who at one point may have voted for Sanders voted for Donald Trump and you know and we're pushing Donald Trump so I I do think like there's definitely been like what do you say like a, not a switch but almost like the in a way what was defined as liberal then is completely different than what we look at as liberal now now a liberal is an insult you're basically you know, this person that's crying about pronouns but doesn't give a, a damn about blowing people up in the in West Asia, doesn't give a damn about blowing uh, people up in, Do in the Donbass, is supporting the arming of Nazis, doesn't care if you're segregated based on your vaccination status, doesn't care if you're taken off YouTube based on the things you say. So I, I like that. That didn't used to be what a liberal was. That sounds to me more like the morality police that's come back. Because again, yeah. for the longest time, conservatives used to be the morality police. Let's not forget, you know, you couldn't say this, you couldn't say that. And now it's more of like liberals have become the morality police where they're clutching their pearls and think they're morally superior to everybody else and they virtue signal all the time. So there's like the, a lot of people who are homeless right now politically because they understand that trying to make sense of, of this via labels in the United States at this point doesn't even matter because right now we're on the brink of nuclear war and our own people are pushing it. I'm going to play this video real quick, fam. Take, let's take a quick second. I'm going to put it on up here, guys. Take a look. Fam, mm -hmm. ah, your microphone staticky again. How's that? Let me hear you. Um, it's no, it's the, it's the cords, the hookups. Yeah. Um, the I sent you a text message, but anyways, um, let me see. So, fam, I, I I wanted to get some examples up of the uh, of, of some of the wokeness and whatnot. Um, but really, first, I want to start off with this Caitlin jo Johnstone comment because she put this in here. Got to hand it to the <laughs> to the war propagandists on Ukraine. 
It's truly impressive how they managed to convince everyone that the real anti-war position on the issue is the one being promoted by John Bolton, Bill Crystal, and Mike Pompeo. <laughs> I mean, she hits it on the nose there, fam. That is the anti-war position these people are talking. This is where the woke is. This is where, you know, this is where the AOCs. This is why AOC got uh, got hit fam and she got heckled the very first time and it's it's it hasn't stopped it's gone from one heckling to the next heckling to the other any thoughts fam you're muted sorry you're muted uh just one of those days try it now sorry Okay. You there? No, you're still not in there. No. Ah. Try now. No. Nope. Well, really quickly, I'm going to put this up too as well. Hear me? Now I hear you. There you are. Hey, now you sound good, fam. I don't do anything. It just switches. Yeah. Yeah, so... We have to fix that because I don't know how. To... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally sitting here talking to you, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, you sound different. It's, it, it don't touch me. it's just crazy. Um, fam, so this right over here, uh, showing some examples of the woke. <laughs> this is the this is the the uh the profile, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see it. Uh, get it together. BLM, Buffalo, Black Lives Matter. And then you have I stand with Ukraine. Stop the war on Tigray. <laughs> this is human rights, democracy. Vote blue 222. Biden Harris row the vote. And this is the stuff they put up, right? Ukraine flags. And then th this is the stuff that's important to them. Democrats codify abortion rights, protect Social Security, protect Medicare with Joe Biden in the cool aviator sunglasses versus MAGA Republicans, ban abortion nationally, nationally, cut Social Security, cut Medicare, make a plan to vote, vote blue no matter who. Family. How are you going to like I this is what I don't understand about liberals. Like I understand as a woman, like I'm pro-choice. OK, I'm pro-choice to like the answer degree. But we, when you look at these countries in the global south, they're not they're not trying to fight for abortion when they don't have basic economic rights. Well, in the United States, you're that's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to focus on this these issues that I'm not saying aren't important, but they're used as wedge issues. They're used as political manipulating issues to get people to follow each party based on these and both parties do it the right the republicans and the democrats do it they use the abortion issue as that issue and they run on that instead p why aren't people like you both suck let's talk about the economics let's talk about this money being funded directly to ukraine let's focus on this uh the united states the american people but no, there's no fight for that. And there's no fight for that because far too many people are still too comfortable or hanging on enough to make themselves feel comfortable so that they're not in the streets out protesting like people are in France, like people are throughout Europe. And, and our, uh, people there understand who NATO is. They understand what's happening. They understand sanctions. Here you could walk around. Uh, well, in the United States, you could walk outside and ask people, what, what are sanctions? And they wouldn't know what the hell sanctions are. You could ask them to put Ukraine on a map. They wouldn't know where Ukraine is. But you could find that they have Ukrainian flags on their bios. You could find that, you know, they have every hashtag known to man. And it's it's really just... Yeah. Um, they won't know what happened yeah. in, in 2014. They won't know what happened in 91. They won't happen to know what happened in any color revolution. All they have to do is a little bit of research and they can find out everything they need to know. To understand this is a public government on the border of... Russia, this is in their backyard. And almost, I mean, like you said, historically, what Ukraine has meant, people, every single time there was a, a, an invasion through into Russia, they went through Ukraine. I mean, it's historically been a, a hot spot. And the United States understood. And this is what we played last week. Uh, when it, the, it, the plan was to always make sure there was, there was an event or a situation on their border 
just like in Afghanistan, which is also on their border, to bleed the Russian economy, to draw them into a Vietnam-style Vietnam war, to hurt them geopolitically. That's what this is about, and it's really disgusting to see all these progressives stand behind this shit. I mean, in the beginning of this, this conflict, fam, a lot of them we knew were taken to the streets. I stand with Ukraine. But it's so vague, right? That, that's the message. No, there's no nuance. I stand with Ukraine. That's like, just tell me what to say. Give me a bumper sticker thing. I mean, it, it, it's like what, everything that we complained about when it came to the Iraq war and the Republicans when we were pushing for the Obamas and all the other people to go on through. It's like, what do you mean you stand with the troops? What does that mean? That you, you stand with the troops, you care about the troops so much that you don't give a fuck that you're sending them off to fight in a corporate rich man bankers war to extract the resources out of Iraq and to keep the, the Middle East destabilized so we can go in there and, and pillage and plunder and do whatever we want. That's what he means to, I stand with the troops. If you stood with the troops, you stood with them so much that you would never use their life as a pawn to go and fight a bankers war. And that's what it means. We see the same thing here from a lot of shit libs, from a lot of shit libs. I stand with Ukraine. It's nauseating fam. Uh, including AOC, which why she got cornered the first time. Now, fam, I don't know if you got anything to say about AOC, but the first time she got heckled was from the LaRouche people who were, you know, like I said, a lot of people aren't crazy about the LaRouche people, but they brought up the doomsday clock as far as, you know, nuclear weapons and what it means and what could happen that we are flirting with World War III. And we really are flirting with World War III, what, what's going on over there right now, especially with the 101 division that's in there. Uh, now, right next door in Romania with live action drills from they, from Kentucky to Romania on the border of Ukraine over there, just freaking flirting with World War Three. The second time she was heckled, she, she, we were told they were homophobes, that these were racist people and they were part of a group. They were homophobes. They didn't give a shit. Now, fam, we have a third time. I want you to watch. And you let me know how she's going, what they're going to, they took three days before they came up with these people are homophobes. I wonder what they're going to call these people now for going and protesting. Take a look. AOC, ladies and gentlemen. Serious. AOC, what about it's the migrants? What about the migrants, AOC? What about the little kids being raped at the southern border? What about the migrants, AOC? The border. The little girls being raped. AOC, what's Talk about the little girls. Talk about the What about the open border? Denounce Joe Biden. Denounce Joe Biden. Denounce the human smuggling team. Bring up the little kids being raised at the southern border, AOC. AOC. What about the southern border? It's your party. It's your party. The blood is on your hands, AOC. The blood is on your hands, AOC. The blood is on your hands, AOC. Where's your photo op now? Where are the tears now? The little girl being raped. Tears, big tears, big tears, big tears, big tears, big tears. AOC's a liar. AOC's a liar. AOC's a liar. Fam, there was a Katie Porter sign, so I'm assuming that was in L.A. And fam, uh, maybe there's some cracks in the ice. I don't know about this, but there were people with masks on yelling. At her, so. I, think that, I think that was D.C., fam, right? Um. I don't know if that was DC or if that was LA because there was a Katie Porter sign up. So I don't know if, it, like I said, I, I think it could have possibly been LA. It looks like DC. It doesn't look like LA, but, um, but regardless, fam. Um, so this is turning point USA right wing outlet, right? Putting this out. Um, that's a given. I, I'm saying that cause I know people are going to say that. Um, one, two, what he said something about the open borders initially i thought this was a bunch of uh immigrants like pro immigrant people um but then he said open borders we don't have open borders guys we we don't have open borders we have the same foreign policy during the, the obama then during the trump and during the biden administration when we talked about with anya what's happening is 
there is a, a group of people that are being uh, given more, uh, like uh, an ability to be here, a work permit. Venezuelans, why? Because they're using those Venezuelans against uh, Venezuela, the current government. There's a lot of Venezuelans that have come out, of course, because of the sanctions. So there is that element where there are certain groups that are getting like pushed through more quickly. That doesn't mean we have open borders. So uh, this whole rhetoric about having open borders is dumb. But the fact is that the hypocrisy that they're pointing out is that she literally was crying, crying, and doing a whole photo shoot with a bunch of, of, of cameras that happened to be there, all in white, in front of the detention centers. And she hasn't talked about them since. She hasn't mentioned very much anything at all, unless she can use it as a target against Republicans, which she pretty much spends her time engaging in. Why does she do this? Because that's her job. Her job isn't to legislate. Her job isn't to actually be in charge of any sort of law or government. Her job is to be an influencer, to be on Instagram and influencing young people because young people don't know everything that we know at this point. Like, and I'm, by young, I'm talking about like 18, 19 years old, people that thought, oh, hey, she looks cool and really just have no idea what's going on. And they get told, oh, yes, she's cool. She's, you know, about left politics and blah, blah, blah. So her whole job is to get those young people back into the Democratic Party. And that's what Bernie Sanders has turned to as well, is to get all these young people back into the Democratic Party, which to me is worse than being a Republican, because they're not trying to be much different. They just are who they are, and you get what you get. But with these progressives, you you ha you get that hope that they're going to do something for you. They run on all this stuff and they don't deliver. So I again, I go back to, is that worse? Yeah, because I think you are taking away from poor people. You're taking away from people that are supposed to be these minorities that you're supposed, supposed to represent and you're exploiting them for fucking votes. And then after the, the elections are gone, they go back on every single thing they campaigned on. And this happens over and over and over again. And it's just, it's a cycle that I'm just done, I mean, repeating. I mean, I, I'm i glad more people are going at her, but she's literally one of, of, of so many that are like this. And I think the reason people do go after her is because she's the most popular, the most held up by the establishment, which is a hint, right? It's a hint that anybody that's promoted by the mainstream media to that degree is not somebody that's a threat to it at all. All right, that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, we're going to wrap the show up now. Uh, there was one other uh, uh, Super Ray from Game.Film. Thank you so much for the Super Ray contribution. It's always appreciated on the couch, guys. Uh, fam, are you going to be back on the news desk tonight? Or are you going to be presenting? What do you got going on over there? No, no, not tonight. Okay, Drop so Wednesday on the Convo Couch, we have Mark Sloboda. He's going to come on and talk a little bit more about what's going on in Ukraine, Russia. And then on Wednesday, uh, Friday, fam, we have Matt Eric uh, booked for the studio uh, for the show. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going down in, in China. It says leader tightens grip in China. Uh, they had a new uh, government form over there, too, as well. Xi Jinping is still in charge. But a lot of people are making a lot of noise fam at the fact that they removed one of the 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 people on the panel right next to it, like the vice president or whatever he was we're gonna get a inside from matt Eric to give us exactly what's going on over there so that's what we okay. got going on so i had a section on raj uh yeah but the the, the microphone is crackling so okay. bad you can't hear anything we're gonna stop right now and we're gonna figure it out and then we're gonna bring it back if we have to do an extra pickup show on thursday we will do so but we have some great guests for the week booked on out so that's going to be it for today guys thank you so much for supporting us uh you guys know all the links where you can go and find us help us out rockfin over here that's our free speech platform for pasta dardula fiorella uh, combo out guys